Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today they released the, I think it was yesterday, they released the season one patch notes info for um, the Diablo 4's first season for Malignant. Now I'm not going to cover all of this. You can pretty much look anywhere at all the negativity. Just know pretty much majority of everything in there was a bunch of nerfs uh, to pretty much every build because they nerfed stats across the board. Um, but we're not here to focus on the negativity. I'm not really going to talk about much about the patch notes. I just want to share with you guys what I will be playing. And if you guys want to follow along, I've got a leveling guide for you as well. So before we, uh, before we really start, uh, I just want to let you guys know that I'll be showcasing you kind of how it will be towards like the mid late game. So right here we have our shapeshifter pulverized druid. Um, this character is in hardcore. I don't actually know how to show you that it's in hardcore without actually logging out. I mean, there's the, like, death elixir, so I imagine, you know, that's enough proof, right? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into a tier 30 dungeon. So these mobs, I think, are, like, four or five levels higher than me, so I think it's a fair showcase. And even after all the, even after all the defensive nerfs, um, you'll see that the character is still pretty strong. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So I'm just gonna pop a elixir of death and some random i don't want to like cheat so i'll just put a resistance potion on nobody's gonna say anything about that right and uh less burning mobs gain unstoppable mobs do some extra damage intentionally picking thorns because the build doesn't scale off thorns right let's go ahead and pop that and click over here now this character right now is using one unique and there are more uniques to use what's important to know is that there's no like hidden secret breakpoints to get for this build you can play it pretty easily once you get the pulverize uh shockwave aspect which we'll talk about a little bit later um some of the previous druid builds i've played i have like a 90 something druid in softcore and then this level 80 pulverized druid now i didn't really like playing grizzly rage builds because number one feels like every druid build goes grizzly rage or direwolf grizzly rage number two you really need to get certain breakpoints for it to feel good with your cdr and that that just got massively nerfed so yeah the main focus of the way this character works is it actually capitalizes on shifting between human and bear human and bear every time we shift into human um, we are unfortunately like a little bit weaker, but then when we shift into bear, we gain a big steroid of damage because of that. So real fast before I start, a lot of this kind of focuses on, for example, resonance, giving you up to 18% more damage for your pulverize because we storm strike into the pulverize. And then you also want to use stuff, for example, like quick shift, which is another multiplier, which is whenever a, sh a skill transforms you, so we hit to go human, and then we pulverize to go into bear, that gives us another multiplier. So now that you have that basic part understood, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the paragon tree that I have, I only have two glyphs right now, level 15. There is so much power to be obtained from my glyphs. For example, I've got a glyph socket open right here. Uh, the glyph that's over here right now is, I'm pretty sure, is this one actually level one? It might actually be level one. I'm missing another glyph on another page here. I do, however, have my uh, exploit maxed out uh, since vulnerability, even though it got massively nerfed, still feels good for that first initial hit, although there might be something new. Anyway, let's get started. This character is also not running the most movement speed that it could, so you can absolutely go quicker. Um, it's just this is what we've got right now. So the standard thing you want to do is basically left click, right click combo. At the beginning of the map or your nightmare, whatever it is you're doing, you want to pop your defensive skills, mainly to generate your initial fortify, and then it pretty much takes care of itself and you don't really have to worry too much. So one of the nice things about this character is it has a really big damage, uh, well, defensive steroid you can press, which is called Petrify. So Petrify will basically freeze lock everything in an AoE around you, making them take increased damage from uh, from your crits, which is like really huge. So a really nice defensive buff. One other thing to address, because I know a lot of people are going to ask about this, is how do you deal with crowd control? So for the most part, you want to try to avoid rolling um, cold enchanted on your maps because mobs with cold enchant just really CC lock the hell out of you. Other than that, you'll notice I have bulwark. So that's going to be right here. While Bulwark is active, you are immune to crowd control. Um, and on top of being immune to crowd control, we also always hold Trample. So if you're playing Softcore, you don't really have to worry about it. That's what I'll be playing on release. But Trample, well, actually, here's a Petrify. You can see everything is now frozen. You get to position yourself and just kind of blast. Trample is, can be, well, basically can be used for mobility. Or you can go ahead and use Trample... 
uh, as a form of CC break. So basically, if your unstoppable falls off from your bulwark, you still have the ability to CC break and charge away from the direction. That gives you enough time in hardcore to pop a scroll of escape, for example, you know, or something else. I'm going to just skip this because you don't really need to see this. You can also potentially play with uh, Wind Shear instead of Storm Strike. The main purpose of Storm Strike is it's just a bit faster than Wind Shear. I don't even know what it's called. It's the little ranged one. Uh, it feels a bit more fluid. It gives you a good form of vulnerability. Um, and uh, that's really about it. Another one is this is this kind of weird thing because of like Diablo 4's movement. Sometimes it can be clunky using a range skill on left click because you're going to constantly like stutter step and hit the targets. However, with Storm Strike, because it's melee, you have a lot more freedom because if you accidentally left click a mob, you still have to run all the way to that monster. So it's not really a big deal in my opinion, right? Another big thing before I, you know, go into kind of explaining the leveling and stuff, a lot of people are going to always ask about spirit management on Druid. Spirit management on Druid feels a lot better once you have gotten your Paragon. Initially, um, in our Paragon tree, you want to jump right on into this board. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the one that gives Ancestral Guidance, because you can start scooping up these beautiful nodes that give Spirit on Kill. Getting three spirit on kill, if your pulverize effectively one-shots 10 mobs, that's 30 spirit back, right? That's a very large amount of spirit. Another nice thing about this build is we have a passive on the tree that makes it so whenever we shift to human form, we gain a bulk of spirit on top of gaining spirit for using the skill. What does that mean? Well, that basically means when we use our storm strike, we're going to generate spirit. Here's a petrify. And then it shifts us into human because it's considered like a non- shapeshift skill so then that's like a double form of spirit regen right so it really helps a lot with the initial spirit gain it kind of helps with like the one two combo that you're sort of doing with the build now as for addressing single target because i know a lot of people have probably played pulverize right and they most likely haven't had the best single target i want to explain where my build is a little bit different than the standard take on a pulverized druid, which I have also played. And hey, look, the new unique, the flesh render, that's pretty cool. So the difference between this and the average pulverized build is the average pulverized build is either lucky hit stacking or stacking as much CDR as possible uh, alongside with Grizzly Rage. This build does not use Grizzly Rage for a number of reasons. Number one, I got sick of playing Grizzly Rage on literally every druid build. Number two, Petrify feels very comfy for hardcore and just feels like it has a lot more oomph to it when you press it. Literally blasts the whole screen, stuns them, makes them take increased damage, but more so, you don't need any big progression into the build. You can just start as it as is once you have the uh, the uh, shockwave aspect. Sorry, I, I went a little on tangent there. Um, the way we can additionally scale our single target um, instead of the Grizzly Rage version is utilizing things such as I was talking about before where you are shifting from human back to bear. This gives you additional multipliers such as I was saying resonance uh, and things like quick shifts. So that's already like 30% more damage, right? Uh, when you're in the Grizzly Rage build, you can stack up to a thousand crit multi, but once that falls off, you have to restack it. And if it's not up for the boss fight, you lose a lot of damage. More so, it's harder to manage spirit in the Grizzly Rage version. And if you are initiating the boss fight with Grizzly Rage, you're not gaining any of the lasting effects and you have to restack it. Now, in the future with this build, you can also go ahead and take use or make use of Envenom, which is another form of crit multi you get to scale. Although that would either have to come in from two ways. Number one, you can drop Trample for Poison Creeper and use that for your single target poison for Envenom. Number two, you can go ahead and get the very rare Tempest Roar Helmet, which I'm not going to really talk about because this is more so for kind of getting you guys started. So now that you have an idea of how that works, I'm going to go ahead and kind of flash my gear a little bit. Insatiable Fury is currently the only unique I'm using, and it's mainly just for damage. Build totally playable without it, it's just for damage. Uh, after we go about this, I'm going to go ahead and kind of flash my skill tree, talk a little bit about stuff, and then we're going to open up the builder, and then we're pretty much good to go. 
Okay, so here is currently my tree. I'm gonna explain my choices and why. So Storm Strike, damage reduction, form of vulnerability, melee actually being a good thing because the movement can be really annoying, and it's a nature magic skill which we need for the other thing. So I go over here for vulnerability. This is the most consistent way for us to apply Vuln on a boss fight. Next up, Heart of the Wild, one point so we can activate wild impulses for a damage multiplier. Uh, our Pulverize is our bread and butter skill. Primal Pulverize is another form of damage reduction. Predatory Instinct for crit multi since we or crit chance since we're near most targets. Iron Fur gives us DR in bear form. Later on, you can choose to swap this to this for movement speed. You can technically actually run this now because of uh, Blood Howl, but you know, up to you. Over here, we've got Earthen Bulwark, one point over here for Unstoppable. I currently have the Fortify. You don't really need this. It just helps get the Fortify stacked right at the beginning of your dungeon run. Blood Howl uh, changes us to Wolf Form, which is good because anytime you're shifting a form, you gain bonus damage when you Pulverize. It's better to shift with Storm Strike, but for example, you blow up a pack, your Blood Howl resets, so you click it, you actually get Spirit back, and it resets because it gains one uh, one cooldown per target killed, and then your next Pulverize still does like 15% more damage because of the shift will show. Over here, I have six spirit when turning into human form. This makes it so our Storm Strike is generating 14 spirit plus an additional six, which really does help a lot. Coming down over here, you can see I've got Crushing Earth. Very good because, um, actually, I have actually removed, um, I don't know if I removed Crash Stone, the, the slow aspect, but anyway, regardless, th this is pretty good. Um, over here, Critical Strike with Earth skills fortify you. This keeps your fortify up even when your defensive skills are down. Uh, Stone Guard is really the saving grace here. You get a big damage multiplier as long as your fortify is above 50%, which is all the time. Trample, I don't even put a point into because Insatiable Fury is giving us um, plus four to our shapeshifting skills. Over here is Petrify. You do not have to go into these two. It's completely optional. Petrify again. We click it. Whole screen is frozen. Um, bosses take extra critical strike damage as well, along with the regular mobs. So very nice for helping burst bosses. Over here, we've got Nature Magic Skills deal bonus damage to elites. Now remember, because of uh, Pulverize being converted to Earth, it is tagged as Nature Magic, which we get on our aspects. I'm not going to explain the aspects. Well, I, I guess we could explain them a little bit because um, they are covered in the builder. Over here is a little bit of life sustain. You can choose as many points as you like, up to three into this. Over here, we've got bonus damage to vulnerable targets. Uh, and then this resonance is the up to 18% more if you kind of do the left click, right click combo where you are in Storm Strike and then Pulverize. Down here, we've got shape, shape shifting skills, transform you into a different form. It deals increased damage. This is what I was talking about when I go from wolf to bear. So normally it's human to bear when you're doing a storm strike, but if you do blood howl to pulverize when you're just clearing, you still get 15% more damage, which is nice. And then over here is just extra damage reduction. Now for our ultimate, I know a lot of people run earth and might, but this is a different type of build. So we run earth sign strength for 20% additional max life in bear form. This lingers, which means it's up pretty much 100% of the time. And then you get 30% more damage while you're healthy. We always want to stay near full life, right? Later on, we can actually switch to Bestial Rampage. However, this is a bit more tricky and typically will require the, um, uh, the, the I forgot what it's called, the um, Tempest Roar Helmet, which I will show you in a minute. We'll just a quick glance at it and then we'll move on to the next topic. So Tempest Roar over here makes it so that your storm skills are now also Werewolf. And the purpose of this is making it so we can use Storm Strike and stay in wolf form, which means we can benefit from Bestial Rampage so we can constantly trigger the attack speed and the damage. And then um, when we take Toxic Claws, our Storm Strike will poison single target, which allows us to benefit from Venom. This is something I learned. I forgot who it was. We saw a YouTuber who's basically playing my build right now that I'm, that I'm playing. But he has like a level 100 version with Tempest Roar and I saw what he was doing and thought that's actually really, really smart. I got a little bored of the grind, so I stopped around level 80. But after seeing that, that was pretty cool. So that's some inspiration to grind towards. All right. Um, as for my aspects, I currently have Slow on my helmet. Um, we've got Insatiable Fury here. 
So critical strike with core skills increase attack speed. Uh, duration of Earth and Bulwark, and it helps feed the barrier. This is primarily for Unstoppable. Um, fortify plus two everything. Pulverize Shockwave over here. Um, over here, we've got core skills deal increased damage based on your fortify, big multi. Over here, we have storm skills, grant your earth skills, crit multi. So using storm strike gives you crit multi and using an earth skill increases the crit chance of your storm strike, which will be good later on when we poison. Uh, and then pulverize is now an earth skill. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk about the builder now. Where did I put it? Let's see. Okay, so two things. Number one, we have malignant hearts. Number two, we have the build. So we have a druid leveling build that I made for you guys. This is how I leveled my character. Essentially, this is a build I have set up to have zero drop only aspects, which means if you are starting fresh, you can play this character. There are everything that is on here, you can target from from a dungeon. So if you don't know how that works, you run the dungeon, you get the codex, you go to the occultist, you click the codex option, and you can slap it onto a piece of gear. The primarily way, primary way we level is poison creeper and landslide. Not to be confused with the new aspect, Poison Creeper Landslide. Essentially, Poison Creeper does so much damage that if you spec it on the tree and spec the uh, like the extra companion damage nodes, it can almost one-shot elites up to level 40. You simply smack with your Storm Strike, get a vulnerability proc, hit your Poison Creeper. When you hit your Poison Creeper, it'll also immobilize any targets around you. So say you have 20 targets and you click it. What this will do next is it will make it so that your landslide right here oh, i actually forgot to put the points in whoops a daisy yeah you want to have that max your landslide over here gets guarantee crits because of primal landslide which is terra mode tldr if you cc a mob with like uh if you, basically if you cc a mob with your poison creeper you get a terra mode terra modes are consumed to guarantee instant critical dam or critical strikes for landslide so you can skip critical chance scale critical damage and you are golden. I leveled as this in hardcore, not a problem. Very, very fun build. Furthermore, when you get to actually play this character, if we talk about some of the gear here. So core skills deal damage based on active companion. If you look at my notes, I actually explain if you get a few drop only ones, you can slap these on an amulet. So one of them, for example, accelerating aspect, Whenever you crit with a core skill, you gain attack speed. In this build, you always crit with a core skill, right? So very, very nice for that. Um, Earth skills deal bonus damage against crowd-controlled enemies. Um, deal increased damage based on your primary resource. So we're primarily going to be very high because it's pretty much full. Uh, Poison Creeper doesn't consume anything. And then you're basically doing the Storm Strike, um, Storm Strike Landslide, Storm Strike Landslide, right? Ballistic Aspect is... Plus two fortify. Sorry, whenever you have fortify, your earth skills gain plus two. Druids are very good at generating fortify. You want to capitalize on this. Damage from earth skills slows enemies hit. Um, basic skills gain bonus attack speed. This is good because you're weaving in your storm strike a lot. Uh, duration of bulwark is increased. Very nice defensively. This one I put on because, again, there's only so many drop only aspects. Sorry, there's only so many codex aspects you can find. So this gives you unstoppable when you press your bulwark, thus giving you nice movement speed during your campaign. Uh, and then over here, retaliation is on our two handed weapon because it gives us damage based on fortify. So not going to talk too much about that. You can kind of see I, I showed like a little bit of a stat priority, nothing too crazy, as it's primarily focused on the leveling. So Going back a little bit more, let's go ahead and save those. Click the back button. So you've got the Druid leveling, you've got the Shapeshifter Pulverize, which is what I just showed you, and then you've got the more endgame version with Tempest Roar. I do probably have to redo the Paragon tree for this one, since you can change a lot at higher level, but the current one on the Shapeshifter will be just fine, because these are kind of the same, right? Okay, so most of that is kind of covered, right? You can see the spirit boons and everything inside there. Uh, also with the shapeshifter pulverizer, if you scroll down, you can see I put a lot of stat priority on the gear. Um, the chest armor I didn't put because I'm aiming for insatiable fury, but you know, life damage reduction will go. I left a, a stat open on a lot of ones because I don't want people to feel like they have to get these four stats. A lot of people sometimes get confused. So three primary stats. And then once you play the build, you'll understand what your four stat is that you want, or you can always ask me on Twitch. Okay. Let's talk about the Malignant Hearts. I was a little, not a little, I was really underwhelmed with this, unfortunately, primarily because 
as you guys heard of what I've said about Grizzly Rage, I'm trying to move away from Grizzly Rage because I just feel like it's a bit cheesy. Every Druid build runs Grizzly Rage, and it just feels like this is aimed towards Grizzly Rage, right? So prime example, Moon Rage is a companion one, kind of a meme. I would love to play companions, but just not really sure. Agitated Winds, I'm not really using this. We don't really use uh, Cyclone Armor very often. Uh, Inexorable Force looks so fun. Up to 30 to 50 distant enemies are pulled towards you while you have an ultimate skill active. A little confused because Petrify is not really an act, like it doesn't have a duration. It has a duration on monsters, but not on us. It would be cool if I pressed Petrify and it pulled like vacuums everything in and they get Petrified. That would honestly be sick. I don't expect that to happen. Um, this is kind of just screaming Grizzly Rage because while you have Grizzly Rage active, it would pull mobs to you, which seems really broken. Uh, and then Unconstrained Beast, when you are hit with a stun freeze knockdown effect, there's a chance to activate Grizzly Rage, which can make you unstoppable. So you get automatic unstoppable. It doesn't even show there's a cooldown. And then it would also pull in all the mobs. I'm really jealous if that's how it works. And I'm like also secretly really annoyed that there's so much support coming for the most commonly used Druid Ultimate. Anyway, let's move on. So Inexorable Force is definitely something we could potentially run. Uh, would be really cool if it actually synergized with Petrify. Coming up to the general, since this is primarily where we're going to be, um, we are absolutely aiming for critical strike damage, even though we deal less with non-critical strikes. The main reason for this is it's hard to get critical strike now. Well, it's not hard to get it. It's just they just directly nerfed critical strike values. So gaining more critical strike damage would help us. We can also hit close to like 65, 70% crit chance with this build. There is a really nice glyph I currently don't have on my character leveled. Um, Shapeshifter glyph. Shapeshifting has a 20% chance to cause the skills damage to critically strike. Huge. So whenever we're going human to bear, or wolf to bear, that pulverize gets a flat 20% crit. So just looking at my character right now, again, far from min-maxed, we are currently rocking 34% crit. However, because of the nearby enemies take are, are more likely to be crit, that's more like 40%, and then Shapeshifter would put us at 60. So before min-maxing gear, we're already at 60% crit chance. That's pretty good. Okay. Um... A little bit more. So this one is interesting, the Dark Dance. Every five seconds, well above 60% life, core skills cost life instead of primary resource and deal increased damage. We have so many forms of healing. I think this might be okay. It also potentially help with some spirit management, but I don't know how consistent this is. I imagine it's every five seconds, it gives you like one charge and you can use a charge. So definitely an interesting one. Revenge is another interesting one, where 10 to 20% of incoming damage is instead suppressed. When you use a defensive, I don't really care about this part. I care more about this. I wonder if this is their way for compensating, giving us mitigation, because they, they pulled a lot of the mitigation stats away from our gear. So this is, assuming this is just straight like its own form of damage reduction, I feel like everyone in the game is gonna basically use this. So this would go on another slot. As for the other ones, I don't really know. Um, I mean, this seems pretty good, where you cycle through malignant bonuses every 20 kills. So 20% attack speed is pretty huge. Getting free resource is pretty huge. Every 21 seconds gain a barrier. This seems like a meme, um, but these two are pretty good. So that's a potential option. Um, this, this right here, after spending primary resource, your next attack stuns. I feel like this is more of a PvP thing. The only thing I could think of with our build is if stun <clears throat> ends up chipping a ton of the stagger bar off a boss, but I can't imagine it does. That would potentially be nice. Determination is okay. Resource draining effects are less effective. In addition, gain resource generation. The only thing I could think of, though, with this is allowing you to potentially run the map mod for, like, ranged monsters drain your primary resource. Other than that, there's Barber. I don't know how this works because it talks about delaying your damage and the game's already pretty rippy. So uh, not really sure if I really want to delay my damage. Maybe that's something to help you kill like Uber Lilith or something. Not 100% sure. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I hope that this helped you guys out. Remember, if you have any questions at all, I will be streaming my gameplay live on Twitch. So feel free to hang out. Most likely doing a 24 hour stream. Um, for the first day of the season. Pretty excited to see how far we get. I personally had a blast leveling 
Uh, this druid I'm playing right now, this is the one I leveled with Poison Creeper Landslide. We went all the way up to about level 52 before we, maybe 55, before we converted over to Pulverize. Uh, one of the nice things is in the season, I think it's called the Season Journey, you actually get Shockwave Aspect for Pulverize. So you could technically convert earlier. It's just what I did is I waited until I unlocked the next world tier, I believe, so I could start getting the new weapon bases, and then I put my Shockwave Aspect on that. Another option is putting your Shockwave Aspect on your Amulet early, so you're not sacrificing a weapon, but you're still gaining 50% of the benefit because you gain, you gain double bonus on weapon, you gain 50% more on Amulet. Anyway, sorry for the information bloat. I hope that helped you guys out. If it did, feel free to hit that follow button. Actually, that's feel free to hit that like button. Um, and that's really about it. So remember, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all tomorrow.